Behind the scenes for the past year, I've been in the process of buying my dream house. We've got our keys and we're now going to our house. My boyfriend and I have bought a 1980s fixer upper of a house. And today I'm gonna to share the process of how we found our dream home. My name is Ellie Jean, I'm a style consultant. And on this channel, we found our style by finding ourselves. what I thought I wanted in a home. Some of it was right, some of it was wrong. I'll come on to that. Our initial list of things that we wanted included lots of light, a detached house, a garden. We didn't want to be on an estate. I wanted somewhere to walk by a river or water generally. I, we didn't want a new build. We wanted three bedrooms, a dressing gown for me, a dressing gown, <laughs> a dressing room for me. We wanted it to feel quite open plan, to have beams, so kind of be a bit old, have two bathrooms, not be in need of help, be out of the way, so that we could have parties and not irritate lots of people and be near some kind of shop. Now you'll notice already that some of those things contradict each other and I was never in a million years gonna get all of those for our budget, which was around 300,000 pounds. But that was kind of the, this is what we'd really, really love. And we knew we were gonna have to give some of that up. And there were also some things there that we didn't consider that would end up being very important and end up actually being make or breaks. My style roots are mushroom, flower, and earth. So, you know, take that into account. So that applies to interiors as well as your wardrobe. So. I wanted a house that felt quite simple, feminine, fun, playful, had character and had a story. And my boyfriend's style roots are stone, earth and mushroom and he just wanted something simple and easy. So we have somewhat similar goals for like the feel of the house, but you know, some contradictions at the same time. Rule one for searching for a home is you don't know what you want. So we looked in three locations. We started out by looking at a village. We both grew up in a village. We both live in Norfolk, which is kind of the bum of the United Kingdom. It's a very rural area and lots of farming, that kind of vibe. The first house we looked at and fell in love with was way out of our budget, like a hundred grand out of what I would now consider our budget. But we didn't actually know at the time how we could get a mortgage, how much we could get a mortgage for, how much a mortgage would be every month. We were kind of just going with it. It was an old rectory, um, again, like a mid-century property, but a lot bigger than the one we ended up with and a lot more work than, one, than the one we ended up with. So I'm actually really glad we ended up not having the opportunity to go with that. That house. But it taught us a lot of things. Firstly, renovation project sounds fun. I'm really excited about that, but also that we didn't really want a renovation project quite so big and so challenging that would essentially take up our lives for the next 10 years. <laughs> Probably make us millionaires at the end of it, but with a lot of stress and maybe misery in the meantime, as neither of us are particularly practical people and you have to be realistic. We then started looking in Norwich, which is our closest city. It's a fairly big city. It's like quite a bit of nightlife, very beautiful. It's quite an old city. There's a university there. And it's a city that we kind of grew up with and we started looking there. I looked at so many houses and flats in Norwich. I was so sure this is what we were meant to do. It felt like the right option for two young people to go to a city. And we also considered living with a friend. We were like, okay, if we live in a city, you know, it'll be very like how I met your mother vibes. As it turned out, the things that really matter, so having three bedrooms, essentially one for each of us, so me and my partner, and then someone who can live with us, that ended up not really being feasible. There just would not be enough room for me to film in um, because the prices in the city are obviously a lot higher. There was one property in Norwich. I was just absolutely in love with it. It was next to a river. It had enough space, I would say. It had three bedrooms. It had two living areas, pretty small, but cute kitchen. It had a conservatory. It had this outside space, not really a garden, more like a terrace. And it looked out onto this beautiful view of the city. And it had this very modern bedroom upstairs with this huge window. And it, it really was absolutely gorgeous. There was a Victorian uh, terraced property. I was absolutely in love with it. But in the end, there were two main problems with it. Firstly, there was no parking and the two boys who I would be living with both drive to work. And although I wouldn't need a car as much, I still wanted to be able to bring my car to the house that we ended up buying. So we kind of had to say no to it. And also there were some mortgage problems with that property. So we had to say goodbye to it. And that was pretty tragic. I think we could have been very happy there, but it led us to our current house. We looked at a ray of flats in Norwich as well. And I also decided that I didn't particularly want a lease hold it has so many complications and some complications that a lot of people are fine with obviously a lot of people buy flats but it felt like not the right 
investment for me at this time. So we ended up looking at a town, a midway between a village and a city. We realized that as 20 year olds, going to a village just feels ridiculous. It feels like becoming old way too early. And so the town we're in gives us access to Norwich. And we originally said we didn't want a town because there can be like a soulless energy to a town. But the town that we ended up in has so many unique boutique shops. It has a lot of coffee shops and it has quite an alive feel to it. And it's not just full of old people like a lot of towns are um, around here. So it seemed like a really good move. And I'm really happy with that move now that we're in a town. So you don't always know what you want. And like I say, we looked at flats, detached houses, semi-detached houses, terrace houses. Like there was not a kind of house that we didn't look at essentially. And I would really recommend that. Don't close your mind off to different ideas. See what's out there and then you can compare as well what the money you have is worth because the money you have, you can get houses and flats for the same amount of money. Um, some are bigger than others. I think we made a lot of assumptions about flats that didn't necessarily turn out to be true. And rule two is the exact opposite. You know exactly what you want. I ended up with almost everything on that initial list that I spoke about with a couple of adjustments. So we realized that parking was essential through the process of looking at houses. I realized that I needed a decent room to film in, which is this room, which is gonna be my dressing room slash studio. At the moment is just a blank empty room with some washing in and a kind of makeshift dressing table. <laughs> in fact, let me bring the roses. Can you see the roses on camera now? That's pretty, isn't it? I'll get to this, but the whole house is currently largely unusable because it's a little bit of a renovation project. We realized that having two bathrooms was essential, not essential, but preferred considering we were thinking about having a third person live with us. So me, my partner and his friend. And just for me as a girl, I wanted to have, you know, that spread out a little bit. The property we ended up with, I mean, like I say, our budget varied so much in the process when we were originally looking. It was way too high. We went with a budget that was so out of my reach. Thank God we didn't do that. And we ended up really scaling down. So we ended up with a property around 300K, obviously with a mortgage. And we also ended up with a freehold rather than a leasehold, which we've already talked about, and some perks, which were on the list, but weren't necessarily essentials, but I'm really glad we ended up with, was a garden. This property does have a garden. Uh, it's detached, which is great, because like I said, we wanted a little bit of space to have gatherings and not upset too many people. It has a little bit of renovation work. So I love the idea of a renovation project. I think it's a great way to get some of your investment back. Actually investing in a house at this time is not the most financially secure decision you can make. I knew that I wanted to buy a house. Like I think you get a lot of financial guys online who are like, oh, don't buy a house, you know, invest in this and you know, it'll be better. And I think there's, I mean, there's obviously truth in that. Just where I'm from and the set of knowledge that I have, buying a house is the best decision for us. I mean, I'm not gonna justify that any further because I'm not gonna go into our specific financial situation, but it feels like the right move. Um, and having a little bit of a renovation project guarantees a little bit of, you know, improving the value of the house, which means we might get some of that investment back. But it's not so unmanageable um, that we can't do it. All it needs is painting, new floors, new bathrooms, which, you know, there's nothing actually structurally wrong with the property. There's nothing like that we're going to need construction workers in. We don't have to build anything or add anything. The layout of the house is perfect. It just needs a little bit of modernizing, which I think is the perfect amount of renovation for us. And there's even a mirror in the town we live in that we can walk by, which is important to me because I work from home and having somewhere that I can just go and wander that's like aesthetically pleasing is quite nice to me. Not just aesthetically pleasing, but busy as well. Like in the village where I lived, obviously there are lots of beautiful fields, but I like there to be people when I go on my walks. So it ended up perfect. And the more we looked, the more I realized what we were wrong about. So I tested so many houses in Norwich. And I think as well, I just wasn't happy with the idea of being 45 minutes away from our families. I know for any US viewers, that probably doesn't seem like a lot, but I just wanted to be able to pop in to home whenever I wanted. I'm particularly close to my parents, especially my mum. And I didn't want to lose that relationship, which is one of the best relationships in my life. So I'm really happy with that, how that turned out actually. And lastly, we realized that compromise is essential in any budget, especially quite low budget like ours. So we realized in the end that we didn't care about being off an estate. We ended up being on a housing estate. It's absolutely fine. I don't know what I was worried about. It's just that neither of us grew up in a housing estate. So it seemed like this weird, strange land that we, we didn't know anything about and actually it's absolutely fine. I realized I wanted character in a house, which we definitely ended up getting, but that character didn't have to look like an old beams cottagey or old Victorian townhouse. It doesn't have to have that kind of feminine character that I'm particularly drawn to in order for me to be excited about it. 
So when we found this house, we were A, a little bit done at that point. We'd looked at so many properties. We'd looked at three or four in this town alone. Um, so many in Norwich, quite a few village houses. And it ticked most things off our list. I would love to say we were so excited. We were so in love. We cried when we walked in. We didn't necessarily have all of those feelings. And I think that's okay. Like we were a bit, we'd you know made a few offers on a few properties and it hadn't gone through. It was not feeling like the most hopeful time, but it ticked it off, off our list. And there was kind of something deep down, like even though I wasn't feeling like, yeah, I'm so excited. I was like, yeah, no, I think this is the right decision. This feels like the best option for us. And I really think we can make this a home. And I just had to ride that gut instinct. I don't even think my boyfriend had seen it when we made an offer. So it was such a risk. It was, and it was, it was a really exciting one. It was built in the mid eighties and not much has been done to it since. Yeah, it still has the old boiler, which now needs to be replaced. It had the, the you know, the carpet design, the bathroom design, the kitchen design, everything from that period. So obviously it needs a lot of modernizing, which isn't to say I'm gonna rip it out and make it a modern neutral home, which you'll see a lot on TV programs. I wanna honor a lot of the elements of the house. Like I really like the retro feel and I'm gonna bring that back in in a cooler way. It was sold to us by the children of an elderly lady who had passed away. So it has a little bit of that grandma feel and grandma smell as well. And that we just wanna get rid of a little bit. For example, the walls were an array of pastel shades like peach, sky blue, fantastic lime green in the hall, which felt like it was kind of pulsating on us whenever we walked in. So yeah, I really want to honor the era of the house. The woman who lived here, I think was a little bit too feminine for the house. Like the house is quite a blocky retro feel and she tried to make it too cottagey, like very cottagey tiles and like floral wallpaper. And that's what makes it feel really old fashioned and kind of out of touch. But actually, if we add a mix of retro mid-century pieces with some modern pieces, I think we can make it feel like a much cooler house. For example, in the for the living room, I've bought a couple of posters a Back to the Future poster and a Star Wars poster. And I really want a Dirty Dancing poster as like the 80s film. Yeah, it was a huge era of blockbusters and kind of give a little nod to that. I bought a mid-century TV cabinet for the living room. And I'll combine these elements with more modern pieces. And I think it will just make it feel a lot more intentional than trying to force a different kind of aesthetic into this house that it wasn't built for. And I want to keep as much of the house as possible. I was going to keep the bathroom initially because I was like, okay, I think avocado bathroom is coming back. We can do something cool with these tiles but actually having moved in, the bathroom is very cheaply made. All the doors in the house are very cheaply made. Nothing in this house, except like the actual foundation of it is built with longevity or quality in mind. So I think a lot of it is gonna have to go. We're absolutely keeping the retro staircase and I will bring in retro elements where possible. And you know, stick to the vibe of the house. But um, a lot of people, I think just by instinct saying, oh, don't get rid of that because you know, the 1980s stuff is coming back in. And although that's true, it's cheaply made, it's causing problems. It doesn't feel like, quality and I think that's important too. So phase one is painting and carpets. Phase two is change the bathrooms and add furniture and phase three is decorate, which I'm very excited about. And now I'm gonna give you the vlog of our move in, show you some of what it's been like living here the past couple of weeks. We've got our keys and we're now going to our house. I've had to shout. There's been a row. There's been a little row. That's our door. It's our door. Oh my God, it's so much greener than I remember. Look at that lime green. It's a bit of green, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Look, look how much the garden's grown up since we were last here. Look how overgrown it is. I'm so happy, I'm so happy, I'm so happy. Okay, so they've left us the wardrobe. Is actually not as bad as I remember. No. I can live with that for three weeks. Yeah, it's only the one in here. Oh, and curtains. Yeah. Look, because this is going to be my wardrobe. This is going to be my dressing room. The best bit of the house. The whole reason we're buying this house, actually. Well, from my perspective.
I've just woken up for the first time in my new house. Well, I've actually been awake ages looking at bathrooms because I feel less and less confident about this one every day. kitchen got pretty sunflowers already looking more homey this bit was a challenge and I did have to have a fight with the spider about who was going to occupy the space uh, mummy's done lots of very good cleaning but she can't go low and she can't go high because she's old so that's my next job <laughs> she can only do middle height <laughs> but she doesn't have to bend any limbs <laughs> this is apparently my new cat we are friends I think. Yes. Yes, she likes me. She's been in this house like seven times today. She keeps jumping through the windows. There's nothing we can do. We've had a great day, haven't we, Mummy? We have. <laughs> so we've cleaned the kitchen, cleaned the bathrooms. Karis has hoovered. We've had the oven cleaned. We've decided to have a big hole in the bathroom. Big floor. hole in the bathroom floor, which is far a from leak ideal. Under, a big leak under the sink. Yeah. We've mended the toilet window down, the loo window downstairs. Yeah. Uh, we've taken all the meter readings. We've done loads. We've even got a little bed now. So I can actually have a comfy sleep today. Good morning. Here's a little update. It is day four. Uh, it's a work day. It's Arthur's first day off work since we've moved in. So he has a lot to do today because I am still at work. <laughs> so I need to catch up a little bit. Oh my god, it's been so exciting. Let me show you some of the changes that I've already made. We can't do a lot because we've got painting and carpets and floors to fit, but I'm doing a couple of little things already. But I'm not a fan of the big white clunky doorknobs. So I'm upgrading them to these little light silver doorknobs, which look so much more modern, so much more fresh, and I think just make the kitchen look a little less dated. My mum brought me these and I'm so grateful. We bought these in the south of France when I was about 10, nine, something like that. And I loved them then and I love them now and she's gifted them to me. So I think they look absolutely stunning. We also have what I like to call tea and toast corner, all sorted out now. I got these from Sainsbury's. They were reasonably priced and I think really cute. They go really well, I think with my new doorknobs. I really wanted silver in here because the sink is silver and I'm not getting any sink. So, and plus I actually think silver's gonna be coming back. We've added some sunflowers, got it as a little workstation today. We have a working fridge freezer, um, which was in my parents' garage. So I'm very lucky that we don't have to buy one immediately. Eventually we'll have to have a fridge and a freezer under here. Um, but for now, this will do, certainly. We have the carpet man coming today. So we went to a shop and got some samples. I'm thinking something along the lines of something like this, something basically like what she already has, but just a little bit, a little bit softer and like throughout. I'd, I'd personally love to have like a wood floor in the living room as well. And everyone else I've talked to seemed to think our carpet's better, so. Carpet it is, unfortunately for me. Um, and plus we can't afford the rugs that I want right now. When we can, they'll still look good on, on carpet. You have to be practical to some extent and that is something that I am learning throughout this process. You, you can't always have the dream Pinterest option because sometimes, like for example, the knobs I got in my kitchen, um, I'm really happy with the ones that I got. But these were 175 per doorknob and there are a lot of doorknobs out there that are a little bit more aesthetically pleasing than like six pound a doorknob. And you know, at some point, you, it's just not, <laughs> it's just not a reasonable purchase. You've just got to be picky. You've just got to know what you're looking for, I think. Um, so you know what the expensive one looks like. What's the closest you can get to that cheaper? And that's what I'm slowly learning and getting better at over the past few days. I've had a huge phase of gold, brass and rose gold. And I think it's about to turn the other way to silver. So I'm quite happy with the fact that I basically have to have silver in here to tie the sink in. I think the key is, and I learned this from Caroline Winkler, she uses the words immovable objects. So the immovable objects in my kitchen is essentially everything. <laughs> um, but especially the sink, um, the placement, 
of the cupboards, the tiles, I can't afford to retile it. So these are things I have to work with, the countertops. It is day one of painting, which is a very exciting day. It's a day I've looked forward to. This is mine and mummy's job. We're about to steam the wallpaper in the spare room. If you've enjoyed this video, I really think you will enjoy my playlist on style roots, finding your personal style, learning to define your tastes. I think you'll find that really helpful. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time.